Hey, everybody, and welcome to Internet Roundup. That is Josh. I am Chuck. We do the Stuff You Should Know podcast. And every week, we round up the internet. Yeah. We find fun and exciting and goofy, uh, sometimes serious things. And put a nice little button on it. Very rarely serious things. Well, <laughs> Chuck, what's more serious than a 500-year-old mummified human sacrificed girl? Is that a joke? Is there an answer to that? No, it's a oh, okay. it's a rhetorical <laughs> question. <laughs> Nothing is more serious. Oh well, then it's not rhetorical. So this isn't uh, this isn't news. They found in 1999 actually, they found uh, the remains of two younger children and a teenager mm-hmm. uh, from the slopes of a cloud swept volcano in Argentina, 22,000 feet above sea level, and they were frozen. Yeah, solid. Yeah, and the thin oxygen, the thin atmosphere, Mm -hmm. and the cold temperatures preserved this mummy. The maiden girl, I think is what they call her, right? Yeah, the maiden. She um, is, it looks like she died last year. Yeah, dude, they found lice in her hair. Live lice? I don't think they were live. Preserved lice? Preserved lice. So she had mummy lice in her mummy hair. Mummy lice in her mummy hair. It's amazing. We've talked about her before. I don't remember what episode, though. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Uh, More preserved than you would see, like, an embalmed Egyptian mummy, apparently, because of the temperatures. And the neat thing is, uh, well, not neat for her. It's very sad. She died, um, they think, from tuberculosis. So did she die from tuberculosis? or I think she was a ritual sacrifice. So they, I think, very important detail. They, she had tuberculosis right. and probably would have died. Okay, but they just made sure by sacrificing her to the gods. Right. They're like, uh, who should we sacrifice? Right. Who's sick? <laughs> oh, coffee carry. <laughs> coffee we'll carry. We'll bring her up here. And, but hey, now she's known as the maiden and not coffee carry. Well, yeah, and plus, not to make light of it, it was a really big deal, and her family was probably revered and venerated, and of got course. a lot of money for letting their kid be sacrificed for the good of the village. Is that how it went? Yeah. Okay. And they got her really drunk first and then hit her over the back of the head when she wasn't paying attention. Right, which is not funny again. But these Why are, are you laughing, these Chuck? These are ancient times. Why are you laughing? And they did weird things 500 years ago. But the neat thing is because of the uh, tuberculosis, they actually think that they can find cures for modern diseases yeah. through working uh, through, I think it was a lip swab was the technique. Isn't that neat? Very neat. And not only that, they think it opens this up to all sorts of discoveries like why the flu of uh, 1918 was so devastating um, which I guess means they're going to start exhuming some bodies so is this a new technique they've come up with for replicating or studying old diseases yeah the I think the lip swab technique was definitely new that is really cool um but yeah that's crazy well thank you the maiden mm-hmm. for your sacrifice I hope she can literally heal somebody in uh, modern times Let's move on to Detroit, man. Yeah, we've talked about this on the podcast before. It's one of your favorite sites, I of know. Of all time. Of all, in the history of the web. Yes. Yes. It's called ForgottenDetroit.com. Mm-hmm. And basically- uh, Surfing around right now. There's a dude uh, who I had the impression that he was a Dutch national who was a, um, an architect. No, I'm wrong. He's not Dutch. He just writes like he's Dutch. Uh, his name is lots of vowels and uh, consonants. David Corman, <laughs> no, just weird <laughs> syntax. Yeah. Um. He uh. His name is David Corman. He went to Western Michigan University in Ball State. He has a, a um historic preservation degree. That's and a cool degree. You you like you can tell. Yeah. In this the what he did with the site, like he would go into a, a an old hotel, an old abandoned hotel, or an old abandoned theater, the old abandoned Detroit train terminal. Um. And just document it, photo document it, mm-hmm. like really meticulously. He would also go into the history of the building. Sometimes, in some cases, he has like original photos from the building, and then you can compare it to the, you know, what yeah. it looked like in its ruined state. Yeah, I like the spirit of it. He's definitely a preservationist. Right. It's not like, look at this creepy old stuff. Right. It's look at the gorgeous facility that used to be here and. Here's what happened here, and here's what it used to look like. Yeah, very neat. And and there is something really uh, engrossing about s- just something that's fallen to decay and abandonment that that used to, yeah. you know, not only be a um, alive and vital, but packed with people. And like these yeah. these places that this guy um, preserved on the web, most of them are gone now. Um, yeah. But they used to be like the the heart of Detroit. Yeah, it's it's sort of sad to poke through for sure, but um, 
it also like I think to keep the memory alive of these great theaters and hotels and I love one is just titled Miscellaneous Ruins. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, it'd be neat if they could preserve some of these uh, theaters and hotels at least. Yeah, I think they're mostly gone. As in raised? Yes. So he got to them first, obviously. Yeah, I think okay. he was working a lot in like the late 90s, early 2000s before they really gotcha. started tearing them down. Well, good for him. Yeah, ForgottenDetroit.com. Really Check it out. Arguably the best website on the web. Yeah, it's very well done. Yeah. Um, my favorite is... Uh, Atlanta Time Machine. It's a similar one. Mm. Um, archivist that takes a bunch of photos of old Atlanta, juxtaposes them with new Atlanta. Yeah, I was thinking, um, aren't there like old photos of Lenox Mall on there? That are yeah. really neat. It's like an outdoor mall. Oh, totally. There's all sorts of photos. And there's now they have it, um, a TV and film section where you can go and click on the Dukes of Hazard. Oh, cool. And see that the pilot for Dukes of Hazard, a lot of which was actually shot in downtown Atlanta, mm -hmm. like a lot of these car chases. Yeah. And then they moved to the outskirts of Atlanta, I think, in the season. But that was back in the late 70s when downtown Atlanta had a lot of barns and yeah. hay bales just <laughs> exactly. laying around. So they didn't have to do anything for the car chase. Car jumps, dirt car jumps. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what Atlanta was known for. All right, so check out uh, ForgottenDetroit.com and I guess Atlanta Time Machine while you're yeah. at it. And uh, we will see you next time on Internet Roundup.